Okay, now last little bit under our system here. We want to talk about prefixes, okay? Uh, we've already mentioned some of these up here in terms of, like you said, kilometers without batting an eyelid, okay? So, what are the common kinds of... Now, I just got to make sure I start with the right row. The common kinds of prefixes, the ones that we've already mentioned, they kind of fit in the middle because they're not the biggest ones. So, if you want to put in... Which row do I want? I'm going to go for the one, two, three, fourth row. We're going to put kilo in here, okay? Now, the actual letter that we use for kilo is just a K, right? And if you have a gram, what do you multiply that by to get a kilogram? A thousand, right? So over here, let's put that 1,000, and we're just writing that as an ordinary number. But of course, we've learned scientific notation, right? So how would we write a thousand in scientific notation? Okay, good. So being that this is like times a thousand, I'm just going to have times... 10 to the power of 3, because that's how many zeros there are, okay? And I guess you'd have some other number, like 5 or 2.3 or whatever, depending on how many kilos you've got, okay? Remember, these are these are prefixes. Um, what would come after kilo? I mean, we know, we're more familiar with the small ones, so what's smaller than that? Like, you've got a gram, you've got, a ki you've got say, um, a kilometer that goes up. What's below? Meter. What's below meter? There's a, there's a prefix we add. It's centimeter, right? Centi, right? So you've got C, and then you add that on to M, we get CM, okay? So here, instead of multiplying by a thousand, we're actually dividing by how many centimeters in a meter? A hundred percent centuries, that's where this prefix is used, right? So what am I going to multiply by if it's dividing by a hundred? I'll give you a clue, it's going to have a negative index, yeah, just... 10 to the power of negative 2. Perfect, okay? Because again, there's two zeros. They're just going in the other direction, okay? Uh, after centimeters, we get millimeters, right? So that's an M, and that's why we have MM. But you've got ML, you've got any other kind of thing. How many mils in a liter? Or how many millimeters in a meter? There are a thousand, yeah? Because you've got 10 millimeters in a centimeter, and 100 centimeters in a meter. Yeah, so I've got three zeros all together. So I'm going to multiply by 10 to the power of negative, negative three. Okay, now from here, the rest of these are less common. So I'm going to fill them in. But I think once I write the names, you might know what they are. So you've got micro here. Now, because micro starts with the same letter as Millie, they actually hijack um, the Greek alphabet. And they use this character. Okay, so that character there... It's like a U with a tail on the front, okay? Um, if you're curious, it's actually the Greek letter, mu, as in it's the equivalent Greek for M, okay? So that's why we use it. So you might, you might see this on like, on medications sometimes, you'll see that, and that's micrograms, okay? So micrograms are um, divided by a million. That's a really, really small number, okay? So being that, how many zeros are there? Six, but you're getting smaller, so it's times 10 to the negative six, okay? One last one I alluded to before, but I didn't, yes. we didn't have any units. Uh, you use N to uh, abbreviate nano, right? Um, now you can see here, you know how we have like a thousand, a million, a billion, and each time you're adding three zeros, another three zeros. The next one is going to be another three zeros, right? So this will be divided by one. Count the zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, which of course means that scientific notation is 10 to the negative nine. Okay, right, to complete this out, we've done, we've gone all the way to Ant-Man. Now let's get that bigger again, okay? Um, you've got mega above kilo, right? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I'm putting, no, no giant units, but anyway. Uh, mega, to distinguish again, because things are getting bigger here, but we're using the same letter, we use a capital M, okay? So we've heard of like megabytes, right? So it's a capital M, and then there's a B. We're going to go, this time we're going to go with this multiplying by um, three more zeros, right? So it's, it's a million. So this is times 10 to the power of six, okay? After megabytes, 
I'm now sort of going into data which we're going to look at later in more yeah. detail, but Giga. yeah, good. So Giga. I suppose it's the closest. Now, again, because we're getting bigger, uh, they actually use a capital G, even though there's nothing else that's there. Um, so capital G, and it's times we've got how many zeros? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the next step up. Okay. So that also tells us the scientific notation. And now if you've got a computer with a really, really, really big hard drive, it will have terabytes of storage. Now this this almost never comes up in the context of like, oh, how many teraliters of water did you use, right? But, but they're mentioning the prefix now because later when we have a look at the focus study called Mathematics and Communication, we will deal in detail with megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes. This is another three zeros, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 which then tells you the accompanying scientific notation. Okay? Okay, now, let's try and close this off. Now, I'm gonna do this once, and then I'm gonna ask you guys to do it for the others, okay?